Wholemeal bread's lovely, isn't it? It's uh, robust, it's substantial, it's packed with wholemeal goodness and plenty of flavour. It's, I would probably say hearty too much, so I won't say hearty, but you know what I'm talking about. It's a different beast to white breads, and it's also a different beast when you make it at home to what it is when you buy it in the supermarket, because realistically, wholemeal bread in the supermarket, in this modern world, uh, is most of the time, in fact, probably all the time, not actually wholemeal bread. And so I feel like it sets unrealistic expectations for us uh, as home bakers as to what we can achieve, and then it kind of ends up with us being thoroughly disappointed with what we did actually make. Hey, home bakers, you might wanna do some or all of the following things to help your next whole meal loaf of bread become uh, the best it can be, as soft, and as light as it can. Starting with the ingredients you choose in the beginning, let's get the most controversial ideas out of the way, shall we? The first thing we can do is to cut our wholemeal flour with a little bit of strong white bread flour. And please do, please feel free to help yourself to the comments box and berate me for not actually making 100% wholemeal bread. Wholemeal flour is the whole wheat grain smashed. We know this already, right? It's got that kind of flaky, um, bran in it. And all that stuff is not responsible for gluten development. It's just the white part of the grain, the bit in the white bag flour, that contributes to the strength and elasticity, therefore allowing our dough to hold the gas produced by the yeast and rise up massive, absolutely massive. Let's say, for example, for argument's sake, let's just say 20% of the flour is the bran, those outside parts that don't contribute, if you had, say, a kilo of flour, that means you have 800 grams of the stuff that really contributes 200 grams of other stuff that doesn't, it won't rise up to something that is 100% white flour. Does this make sense? You've probably heard me say it loads anyway, but 100% wholemeal bread is always gonna be the heaviest one, and then the bigger the ratio of white to brown, the lighter it becomes until you're in white bread territory. Cutting in 100 grams of white flour to 400 grams of wholemeal flour for a loaf, for example, even 50 grams of white flour to 450 wholemeal white flour will have some kind of a difference in how light it becomes. And the rest is down to your taste. How robust and heavy do you like your bread and how light do you want it to be? These are ratios you can play with to help you achieve a lighter loaf of bread. And believe you me, those ones in the supermarket, they're light and fluffy and made of all kinds of weird things and magical dust, and they're never 100% wholemeal bread. For if they were 100% wholemeal, they would never be as light as what they are. Simple as. Oil and butter is another thing that will help you achieve light and soft bread. Any kind of fat that you add, oil, butter, egg yolks and stuff like that, but in this scenario, oil and butter. Are the things that help keep your bread softer for longer. They bring uh, moisture that doesn't evaporate. That's how my head works anyway. They create a dough that's a little bit easier to manage when you're kneading it, and the final bread has a bit extra softness to it. Oil is the fat by itself. Butter is the fat with a little bit of moisture in it, isn't it? Which can also give you a little booster in the rice when it bakes. 20 grams or so, 20 grams of oil, 20 grams of butter, 20, 25, 30, something there per loaf. Won't affect the texture of the dough too much and will bring that additional softness in your final bread. Water is another factor. If you up the quantity of water in a wholemeal bread dough, which you probably should do anyway in theory because wholemeal flour soaks up more water than white flour. If you up it as much as you can while maintaining a manageable dough, the additional water will encourage the gluten that is there to develop and help your loaf rise up nice and big. If you are adding additional water and you wanna keep your dough manageable, one thing that you can do before you knead, just mix up all your bread dough ingredients Leave it on the side, cover with a bowl, give it 10, 15 minutes to absorb that moisture before you start kneading. This gives the flour an opportunity to absorb it all. The dough comes together much easier and much quicker, and that is universal for all bread doughs, really. If it's too sticky and wet to manage on the table, give it 10, 15 minutes rest, let it absorb all the moisture, come back to it, and you'll find it's much easier to knead. In this scenario, what we're talking about here is getting that additional water into your dough, making a looser dough that is able to rise up better, larger. And the bigger the volume, the lighter the bread will be. Sugar is another thing they might wanna use. Sugar has many uses, one of them being sweetness, bringing the sweet 
taste to our bread though, one of them being an opportunity to add flavor by choosing which kind of sugar you want to add. Whether it's refined white sugar or golden cast or soft brown or soft dark brown or honey or something, some kind of sweet sugar doesn't just bring that taste and flavor, but also brings lightness and softness like we spoke about in the Japanese milk bread. It's a humectant, it absorbs the moisture, locks it in so it doesn't leave and then so keeps your bread softer for longer. That's why loads of people use it in the bread, so much so that a lot of people think it has to be in there, that it has to be included, otherwise you can't make bread, which is, we all know by now, false. The next thing is to extend the resting time. If you extend the rest in the same sense as we spoke about earlier, giving the dough time to absorb the moisture, it gives the dough more time to develop the all important gluten, as well as the physical aspect of us needing it, developing the strength and the structure in the gluten, so too does leaving it alone. Sitting in the moisture develops that gluten really nicely, allowing for a bigger loaf at the end. Extend the rest, if it says an hour, Take it to 90 minutes. Take it to two hours if you want to in that first time round before you shape it up. You'll notice a big difference in your bread, I reckon, in the end. And to really get the most out of that extended rest, you could also do an additional knockback or fold halfway through. This is something we did in the Home Bakers Club for the recipe for this loaf, which you'll find there if you're a club member, go and have a look. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, it's online bread making courses on demand wherever you live on the planet, go and have a look. But what we did to try and make the lightest wholemeal bread possible is to extend that resting time and knock it back halfway through. We gave it 45 minutes to an hour and then squashed it all down, removing all the gas, making sure the dough comes back from nothing again. And what we're doing in that instance is we are re-strengthening the dough so it's able to take on more gas. And we are also building a little layer of structure. The deliberate folds, rolling back up into a tight ball, builds structure so that when we do it the next time when we shape, that's double the structure, we get a better, rounder shape to our loaf of bread and it has more tension so it's able to rise up bigger than it would have had we not done that. If you cover your bread dough with something airtight uh, when you are rising it up, it stops the outside from drying out, which may seem obvious, but there's more to it than often thought, I think. So if you are proving up a loaf of bread on a tray and baking it on that same tray, what happens while it's proving is the outside will likely dry out and underneath where it's touching the tray will stay moist. That becomes the moist and weakest area. So if you baked your bread, let's say, for example, without cutting it and scoring it on the top, what would happen is your bread will jump in the oven. And if it wanted to burst somewhere, it would burst where that moist area is, because that's the area of the dough that's the weakest in comparison to that dry skin on the top. Even if you did score that dry skin on the top, it still might dry up in those gaps, restrict the puff here, and burst out sideways from underneath, where it's the moistest and therefore the weakest. So, like we did in that recipe, if you upturn a bowl on the top or cover with something airtight, like a plastic box or something like that, or stick it in the microwave, it stops the outside from drying out, keeping it moist all over top and bottom. That way it serves multiple purposes. It stops that burst from happening underneath, allows it to rise to its full potential, and then it's still kind of soft and elastic on the outside. So when it does hit the heat of the oven, the whole thing can expand nicely and evenly. The bigger the volume, the softer the bread. The next thing is prove it up to the max. What we could have done here with this loaf is proved up some of the way and done a slash and got the big burst happen in the oven, but I wanted to prove it up as big as possible. So it was really quite delicate, as delicate as I thought I could get away with before I baked it. And this kind of thing comes with practice. So I took it to the edge where it really started to become fragile, then slashed it and baked it. And that benefits our bread in many ways, right? Because not only does it allow it to you know, the bigger the bread, the bigger the volume, the softer the bread. But also you'll find that lighter breads, breads with more air inside, actually bake quicker. Things like ciabattas, croissants, light uh, sweet buns like brioche. It takes less baking time to bake through to the middle. And this being a whole meal loaf of bread has a lot of moisture in there. And it's quite, like I said earlier, robust 
It takes a lot of baking to get to the middle, but the lighter you can prove it before you bake it, the less time it takes to bake, and then so it'll be make a less dry bread in the end. The bread will hold onto its moisture for longer because there's more moisture in there because you didn't bake it all the way in the baking process by baking for too long. Does that make sense? And when you do come to scoring your bread though, score it kind of deliberately in a way that it makes sense for it to rise evenly and upwards instead of outwards. In the recipe in the club, we always talk for a little while about the placement of the scoring, whether we place it, or if I want to score a square on the top, we might place it to the edges. It's better for the bread though to rise if we place our cuts closer to the middle, so then it's more likely to rise up instead of spill out sideways. We go into great detail in that video about where to place our scores in order to get the best result in the end. And this is not everything either, right? There's so many other things. You could use all these combined, the little bit of oil, the sugar, the extended rest, the fold. We do all of those things in that recipe in the club. But firstly, to help our bread be as light as it possibly can. And secondly, as a, a kind of a, well, a lesson. To really give this bread its purpose in the club to be able to teach us all these lessons along the way. And then as, you, as you're learning about bread and wherever you do it, wherever you do it, in a club or here on YouTube or wherever you choose to get your information from, you can introduce other aspects of bread making, like the tang zong for the Japanese milk bread, for example. A cooked mixture of flour and water that locks in that moisture will really help a bread like this. Introducing a pre-ferment, we spoke about that in the club a couple of recipes ago. A small amount of dough left in the fridge overnight for 24 hours or whatever to create some flavour and more elasticity and more strength to bring more volume and more character to our bread dough. Bread making is infinite and there's so many things you can try as you learn, as you continue on your journey and as you pick up these things along the way wherever you get them from. It's my hope that you feel comfortable uh, at some point along the way that you want to give these things a try and you can chop and change and tweak things how you want. Remembering always to take notes along the way so you know what you did last time and you can learn from that next time. This bread is in the club. There's loads of other things in the club. If you want to go and join it, you can. And if not, that's cool too. But um, I hope you got some value out of this video for your wholemeal bread. I know there's a lot of you out there that love your wholemeal. I hope this helps you out. Nice one. See you soon.